Well, thank you for joining us. Today we're going to talk about the importance of VAVS reps, deputy reps, the importance of uh, recruiting new volunteers, and um, highlight mostly on our, D our first ever DAV Community Impact Day. We're going to have a couple videos that I'm going to show you as well that are going to highlight some opportunities to recruit and, and bring people into the DAV family. So first of all, as always, I'd like to talk about the uh, value that DAV puts in our, for our voluntary services program. Last year, DAV committed, what's that? Can you hear me now? It's like a good Verizon commercial. So d last year, DAV committed uh, $39 million to our voluntary services initiatives. It's very remarkable, it's a wonderful program. And these are all of our programs that we have the privilege of overseeing at DAV. Uh, we got our winter sports clinic, golf clinic, transportation network, scholarships program, uh, volunteers in the hospital, Boulder Crest mentoring retreats, uh, just to name a few. In case you can't figure it out, uh, the three of us stay pretty busy. The importance of EAVS. Uh, in more recent, in the last two years, I've seen a significant, significant decline in the, in the number of hours being reported through our VAVS program. Still remarkable numbers, but it's imperative that as a department that you find individuals that can attend and go to the VA and represent our organization. They are brand ambassadors for everything that we do. They should be knowledgeable about all of our programs and services. I'm not going to read this whole slide to you, but a, you know, VAVS rep at a facility needs to know everything that DAV has to offer. They need to greet veterans when they're coming in the facility. They need to talk about our organization. They need to encourage them to get involved. We, I think as an organization, we are missing a great deal of opportunities to have interactions with veterans at the hospital who may be unaware of who we are as an organization. So at, at the department level, when you're assigning individuals to be your VAVS rep, your VAVS dep, honorary rep, they need to ensure that they're going to attend their quarterly meetings. Uh, I, get quarterly, I get reports from all across the country, and I am aston astonished at the number of representatives we have that don't even go to the meetings. And most of these meetings are done in a hybrid fashion. Some of them are via um, Microsoft Teams. Some of them meet in person. And if, if you have a person that's a rep and can't even attend a Teams meeting, you need to take a, take a step back and look at finding somebody who can be an advocate for our organization and attend those meetings. Here, here's the other levels of uh, representatives for VAVS that you can have. Obviously, uh, your deputy rep, uh, any of these folks can attend. What is detrimental to our organization is we can lose our place at a table in a VA hospital if we don't have folks attending these meetings. Um, it, some places are better than others with folks attending, but it's imperative that, I, I can't say this enough, it is absolutely imperative. If you're going to have somebody be a rep for DAV, please ensure they know they need to attend the meetings, they need to visit with the director, talk about things that we got going on. Um, I know that, that that person can be extremely helpful for recruiting volunteer drivers or some of our ride-along campaigns that we've done across the country. And it, I'm the VAVS rep at the Cincinnati VA, and I visit with the medical center director every time I'm there. And we talk, and we're, we're trying to find ways to be creative and come up with new initiatives to support and augment uh, what VA employees do. Did I go? So here are some traditional ways that folks can volunteer in the hospital. Um, some of the newest initiatives are the Compassionate Contact Corps. That's where individuals visit with folks via Zoom, uh, FaceTime calls, check in on people, red coat ambassadors, uh, escorting individuals around the facility. Um, these are opportunities for our reps, our deps, and you as volunteers to recruit new people. Uh, a lot of medical facilities have a golf cart program where they pick folks up at the parking garage and drive them to the front of the hospital. They have an interaction with them for about a minute. Um, that's an opportunity to say, hey, uh, what do you do in your spare time? 
Uh, are you interested in becoming a DAV volunteer? We're always looking for folks. We could, we could stand to have you come to our family, be, be part of DAV. Um, heck, you might even be able to sign him up as a member. Um, you know, in Barry's report, he talked to, to all of you about the importance of recruiting somebody. Uh, that's a great opportunity as a volunteer to invite somebody to join our organization and help us continue to uh, add to the DAV family. So um, these are our incentives levels. Uh, and if you attended our seminar last year, we had an individual from Minnesota stand up and said, why do you stop at the level 15? Well, as you see, we added five more levels. So um, it, was a, it was a valid, valid concern and something that we got so used to and looking at. When he stood up and said it, I went back and looked, and three months later, I added five new levels so I could make sure I'm recognizing people who exceed those milestones. So when you ask us questions or tell us things, we listen. So we took that back and, and added these new levels. And it's important that we recognize our volunteers for what they do. Yeah, we send a, a, a little letter, a little postcard with a trinket and recognize them for what they do. And um, I'm really proud that we work very hard to try to get as much American made veteran owned business stuff that goes out in our incentives. So um, that's something that we are proud of as an organization. Our local veterans assistance program. You know, this is anything that you're doing outside of the VA medical facility. These are things that you can do um, and invite your neighbors to get involved. I, I can't tell you guys how often Ron Oscar and I hear, well, they're not a veteran, they can't volunteer for DAV. Did, did anybody think you had, in this room, be, it's okay to put your hand in the air, I'm not gonna, I'll, I'll try not to point you out too bad here, but. How many of you thought you had to be a member of DAV or a veteran to volunteer for DAV? Okay, um, that's wrong. Anybody can volunteer for DAV. And that's all right. That's why I need all your help to go out and encourage others to get involved. We have a place for everybody who wants to give back to veterans in their community. So, um, and, and thank you for putting your hand in the air. Um, that's all right. I'm, we're trying very hard to break down that misnomer that you have got to be a, a, vol a veteran or a member of DAV to volunteer. Well, I, I do want to point out the hours here. As you can see, we almost hit 2 million hours last year. So we are seeing these numbers continue to rise, and I want to say thank you to everybody who is sending in their hours. And, yeah. Now, how many chapter service officers do I have in the uh, crowd today? All right, keep your hands up for a second. Now, be honest with me. How many of you forget to report your hours. All right, I'm gonna ask you to do your best to get those hours to us because those hours are a very significant amount. As you see, we had 307,000 plus hours from chapter service officers. And the good thing about those hours is I can put a monetary dollar amount on those hours because that's a professional service that you're providing to veterans. That right now is, what is the rate, Oscar? 33? It's a little over $33 an hour. So do me a favor, work hard to get those hours into us because that's a significant amount of uh, money and a significant amount of hours that when our national commander is at our mid doing our, their midwinter testimony, we can talk about that. We share that th those numbers in full transparency with watchdog groups that want to know what's going on. So do me a favor, work very, very diligently at getting those chapter service officer hours in or any LVAP hours in, okay? The reason I'm talking about this, again, this is another opportunity for you to go out and recruit people to become a volunteer for DAV. If, if we're not trying to find somebody to replace us, we're, do, we're shooting ourselves in the foot. We need to be constantly looking and trying to recruit people to become a volunteer. These are, these are just a few ways that you can get involved in the community. Your imagination and creativity is your only limit. I mean, you could have a, a veteran neighbor uh, that needs a light bulb changed. I know some of you have heard me say that before. That is not a joke. We had a Korean veteran call our office and say he needed his light bulb changed. He couldn't, he couldn't climb a ladder. I left work, went and picked up a light bulb, went to his house, changed his light bulb out, sat and visited him for about 45 minutes. 
meant the world to them. That's, that's such a simple task that a lot of us take for granted. Our transportation network, we're seeing our numbers start to rise again here. And uh, we've done a concentrated effort for our media ride-alongs to recruit volunteers. If you weren't here for that last seminar, uh, we did this in Las Vegas, and they got 150 new drivers from the media ride-along. And that the story ran like five days in a row on three different news networks. Um, if you're interested in working on a recruitment campaign through the media ride-along program, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, Brian Buckwalter, who was just up here, um, he, he's very instrumental in helping us work with the local VA's public affairs office and trying to coordinate all that so we can do that. It's a very, very nice opportunity for everybody in the area to see what they can do and have a meaningful impact uh, helping veterans in their community. And again, you don't have to be a veteran or a member of DAV to be a volunteer. DAV Community Impact Day. Um, we're very proud of this initiative. It launched in April, April 6th to be exact. And we had more than 700 people pledge an hour of their time to get out and give back to veterans in their community. And we were in all, we were in all over the uh, types of activities people did. Um, we had some folks go to a uh, veteran memorial in their town that the, the bricks were starting to collapse into the ground. They pulled all those bricks out, redid the surface, and put the bricks back in. Um, and they, they organized a large group to do that. We often say thank you for your service, but it's more than just words to, to veterans. Let's get out and do something meaningful for them. Uh, get out and help them um, with the, the tasks that they, they may not be able to do anymore. Uh, invite them to a coffee shop for a cup of coffee and sit down and visit with them. Uh, go over to their house, give them a cup of coffee, sit down and talk or tea or, or whatever. I mean, it, it, it was, it's absolutely amazing what uh, you guys did this past April. And it's not too early to be thinking of what you're going to do this next DAV Community Impact Day. And I really hope to see our numbers double. So we had seven, more than 700 pledged this year. I'm hoping to see 1,400, 1,500 people do that next year. Here's a video about... When you volunteer with DAV, you change lives. Those of the veterans you serve... It makes me feel good. It makes me feel like, you know, they care. You know, it helps build your esteem. You know, also it makes you feel a part of. And yours. You almost get back more than you give, no matter how much you give. You always end up with more. It's the one thing that doesn't ever empty your cup. It just keeps filling it back up. Even if you can only give an hour a month, your effect is profound. Those little moments, Good job, those interactions, <laughs> that outstretched hand, they all add up a ripple effect that continues outward, touching your neighbor, your community, the country, the world. People's most precious commodity is their time, and that has never been surer than today. So many things compete for our attention, but often what wins isn't people around us. Just imagine what DAV could do in the lives of veterans if each of us just committed to volunteering once a month. There are thousands of veterans who rely on us now, just as we relied on their service to our country. Our ask of you is simply to do what you're able. You don't have to be a DAV member or a veteran to volunteer with us. You just have to have a willing heart. Our departments and chapters regularly organize community volunteer events. Our members strive to keep a pulse on the needs of their veteran neighbors. Something as simple as stopping by a veteran's house to visit or running a few errands can ease a burden. Thanks for your service. One thing I noticed in that video, my hair is getting really gray. You know, I'm asking all of you to spread the word about DAV Community Impact Day. Spread the word about volunteering for DAV. Um, we have so much more to offer, and, I, and, I, and I'm standing up here and imploring each of you to, to do what needs to be done. Help us bring more volunteers to DAV. Uh, help us find more members for DAV. Uh, it, we're all aging. We're, 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 
Um, I'm sorry, I'm having a brain fart. <laughs> you know, we've got to find people to help step up and fill the roles that we're currently doing now. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually begging you guys, help us find more volunteers. Um, we see all these wonderful stories that are coming in, and it's, it's inspiring. Uh, you know, Ron, Oscar, and I, we don't, we don't just run the Voluntary Services Department at DAV, we actually volunteer. You know, the, one of the images you saw in there where they were painting the ceiling in this lady's house, that was a Gold Star family. And uh, a contractor took advantage of her, took her money, and left. Didn't complete the task. And Ron, Oscar, and myself worked very hard with some friends that we have, and were able to get everything done and completed for her. So, uh, uh, you know, we, yeah, absolutely. You know, encourage folks to, to go to davcommunityimpactday.org. Um, start pledging what you can do for this upcoming year. Um, these are, this was a list of items that we put out for people to give them some kind of ideas of what they could do. And like I said, I, we got some images here of what folks did to get out and give back. Um, Bunny and Ann, the uh, auxiliary adjutant, and they, they, they went out and baked, got cookies and took cookies to veterans all around their community. I thought that was really cool. Something, something as simple as that. Uh, this was the uh, Memory Fox platform that we used last year. So we encouraged people to, uh, once they pledged, they got a link and they were able to tell us what they were planning on doing and they were able to upload photos. Uh, here's some of the photos. Um, the second one from the right, you'll see uh, the Ad National Agent Barry Jezanowski. Uh, we were at the Winter Sports Clinic for DAV Community Impact Day, so we brought a whole bunch of forget-me-nots up there. And we sat and assembled forget-me-nots for about an hour, and we had a bunch of our sponsors come in and do that. Our scholarships program, this, this is something that we need your help with as well. Uh, we award 10 scholarships, $110,000. The youth are our future. Uh, for anybody who sits on our interim committee, um, my cup is filled when I get to read these nominations and these applications of these young adults. Um, obviously, uh, hopefully you all got to see Amelia Markham, our top scholarship winner. Um, we're gonna have a video, uh, that same video, we're gonna show it to you again, but these, these young, young adults are amazing. They're doing wonderful things and giving back, and um, DAV changes their lives. So if you have some young adults in your neighborhood or in your communities, let them know about our scholarship. Um, it's easy an opportunity for them to earn, earn a lot of money to help get them through school, and all they have to do is get 100, of, 100 hours of volunteering to be eligible. So I'm gonna show you this video of Amelia. I grew up every summer going to North Dakota and my um, grandparents lived there. And then we would go and visit a lot of my family who lives nearby um, the Turtle Mountain Indian Reservation. We'd go to powwows. We had a lot of family gatherings and Amelia was introduced to a different world on the reservation. They don't have a lot, but they're happy with what they have. But I wanted people to feel secure and I mean my reservation alone has a 69% unemployment rate and that's not going to get any better unless there's some sort of action. I really wanted to create a guide that had access to all the benefits comprehensively across the board to make sure that our veterans could have easy access to their health care benefits, their educational benefits, their family benefits, which are so important and they rightfully deserve through their incredible service. I think the veterans were so touched by what she did, you know, that she cared about them and, and she and they were so proud to see this document, you know, that that showcased them. We wouldn't have a North Dakota Native Veteran uh, Resource Guide if it wasn't for her. We have five tribes in North Dakota, and uh, each one of them utilizes this guide. And it's not only for the veterans, but it's also for the uh, spouses and the dependents to utilize. So it's got a big impact on the entire state of North Dakota. 
what guides me is that statistic that my mom shared with me about Native Americans serving in the military at the highest rate among all ethnic groups, because that just that just inspires me that my community could do that. And uh, I want to be a part of that. And I want to continue my family's legacy of serving our great country. She's serious about what she does, no matter what it is. Whatever mountain she has to climb, she's going to climb it till she gets there. I think that volunteering to help veterans has really informed what I want to do in the future. And my passions are really to create opportunities for underrepresented communities within this country um, and improve access to resources for communities such as the veterans community, the Native American community, communities that have had a big impact on me. I want to give back to that community. So I'm really excited about graduating with my degree in economics and international relations, and then taking what I've learned at Stanford and applying that to help give back to the DAB. Yeah. Absolutely, she is a remarkable young lady. And I wanted to do something different this year. Normally we just tell you the names of the other top 10, but I wanted to put a face to their names. Um, every one of these young adults did something amazing. I got a quick question for you guys. Um, so every, every year we send out reports to the department that says you have all these folks in your department that are eligible for the scholarship. And we have all of these individuals that have huge milestones for vo potentially volunteer of the year or auxiliary volunteer of the year. How many of you are receiving those reports? How many of you are disseminating to them to your, to your chapters? All right, thank you. I'd, lo I'd love to see more hands go up for that, but uh, reach out to your department if you're in a chapter and say, hey, did we, you get a report from National that tells us who's eligible for a scholarship? And be looking at your, your, your folks in your chapter that might be eligible or might be worthy of being recognized for Volunteer of the Year or Auxiliary Volunteer of the Year. Uh, we really need those nominations. And uh, the scholarship application is open now. So if you have anybody that's eligible, Encourage them to go to DAVScholarships.org and apply. Yeah, same with Volunteer of the Year. If you know somebody that's eligible for, or you think needs to be recognized for that, send their nomination in. We'll, we'll, we'll go through those, start working on them. But what, a, what an amazing group of 10 folks here, right? And the reason I'm highlighting that, that's another opportunity for us to recruit volunteers, right? Young adults that uh, DV is going to leave a lasting impact in their lives, and who knows? They may go in the military and serve and remember DAV was there. They may go on to be um, a CEO of a Fortune 500 company and want to donate to DAV. Uh, you never know what's going to happen with these folks. Heck, they may become a senator or a congressperson and uh, remember DAV when we're there trying to advocate for uh, legislative benefits for disabled veterans and their families. Um, so, uh, most of you know that at our national headquarters, uh, we host a homeless stand down the first Friday in October every year. And it's something that uh, we're very proud to do in partnership with the Cincinnati VA. Uh, here's some numbers of the folks that we assisted last year. What I really like is that we had over 90 vendors. 90 vendors came to our headquarters and helped us mitigate legal woes for veterans provide direct assistance, stand up wireless, would give, give veterans a free cell phone so they could make it to job interviews, so they could reach out to their family, do what they needed to do. We also do haircuts, uh, manicures, food, the whole kit and caboodle. And it's a, it, it's a wonderful event and uh, we're very glad to do it. And we continue to see our numbers go down. So we're, we're making an impact in our community. So, and again, talking to those veterans as they come through making sure they get their claims for benefits. Uh, we had an individual come through last year. She was homeless. She went and saw our National Service Officer Don Inns at headquarters, found a clear and unmistakable error in her claims file. Now she's in an apartment and receiving her benefits she's entitled to. So totally, totally transitioned her life. Here's a video from the stand down.
I thank everybody that's involved in it. They're, they're just tremendous people. Believe it or not, I'm almost at the top. I, I started at the bottom. I've been up and down that ladder so many times, it's, it's unreal. You learn from the basic training. This man can save your life. I've learned 30 years later, this man is still saving my life, and I think that's wonderful. Thank you. And all these wonderful videos are courtesy of Kevin Kirkendall over there. Thank you, Kevin. And I want to say that that veteran that we were able to help, she's now a lifetime member of DAV. So, uh, I mean, full, it came full circle, right? So that was an opportunity to help her at a, at a critical point in her life. And now she, she loves DAV. She's totally, and she's a volunteer at the Cincinnati VA too, right? All right, so here's our contact information. Um, you can reach out to us at any time. We're glad to uh, help you with any questions that you have.